All right, I'm sure you guys have seen the 24 hour timer challenge going around where you start a timer on your phone and then you pause it every time you stop reading and you go for 24 hours. Decided to take this challenge a step further than normal. I said I want to do it three times. <laughs> I'm going to do it once with audio, physical, and then ebooks. I've only started it with audiobooks so far, and I'm reading Cleopatra by Stacey Schiff for this first one. I'm only on about 39 minutes on my way into work this morning because I was watching reading Juniva's talking bits on her birthday sprints. But we will pick it back up tomorrow and we will see how many books I read in the page equivalent for audio at the end of this 24 hours. This is my second update for the 24 hour reading timer challenge with audiobooks. Um, I've only been listening to audiobooks while I drive for the most part this week. And it was kind of like on and off because I am listening to a nonfiction book first for my nonfiction November. We are at, pull it up here almost five and a half hours and we are about we're at 69 percent in cleopatra by stacy schiff i am enjoying this one it is um egypt history dense obviously but it also goes into uh, a bit of roman history because of cleopatra and caesar's relationship and cleopatra and mark antony's relationship um, this says I about, have about four hours and 22 minutes left total in the audiobook, but I'm re listening at two times speed, so probably roughly two hours. Um, uh, my goal is going to be to finish this one tomorrow, and then, um, I have another book checked out on Libby here called Imposter by Brad A. Godfrey. And, um, let's go into that one. I think that one, this one's a thriller, um, about two sisters. It says two sisters, a lifetime of secrets, and then it has, um, a more in-depth synopsis. But it looked interesting. That book is about 10 hours. I'll probably listen to that one at two times speed as well. But, um, that is not the book I wanted to listen to. I had one on Hoopla that I wanted to listen to next. Uh, what was it? Can't remember the title right now. Let's look. What was I trying to check out? Oh, I wanted to check out uh, A Marriage of Inconvenience by Penny Reed next or The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. The Penny Reed book, it's the last book in that series I need to listen to. So I kind of wanted to check it out. And The Cheat Sheet uh, fits some readathon prompts I'm doing this month. So I wanted to listen to that one. But when I try to go on to Hoopla, and like if I hit borrow, wait for it to load here, it tells me this. And um, I don't know what exactly that means. I've gone to my like library website, and it doesn't tell me anything. Like it doesn't tell me anything on there besides what my library card number is and my info. I don't know if my library card technically expired because I know we have to renew our library cards here every two years. I don't remember the last time I had to renew it because if it was two years ago, it would have been 2020. And I think maybe by November our library was like reopened partial hours, but I can't remember and I don't know when I last renewed the card. I'm hoping that's just like the solution <laughs> that I go into the library tomorrow. I would have gone today, but they're closed on Fridays and Sundays, my library is. So, I'll probably try to go in tomorrow. I think they open at 10 tomorrow, so I might go in there and see if the issue is that I just need to renew the card. Let's hope. I will keep you guys updated on that, because it would suck if there was a legitimate issue and I couldn't use Hoopla, because I have a ton of audiobooks on here I wanted to listen to. It's pretty much all I use Hoopla for because I hate the way their ebooks are formatted. And I don't own audiobooks. I don't purchase them. I don't do an Audible subscription. I only get ebooks from Hoopla or Libby. <laughs> so I will keep you guys updated on what that situation is. Right, so I finished Cleopatra here. I'm going to give it four stars out of five. It is pretty good. Um, it is very, it's, it's nonfiction. It's very history dense. If you don't like history, would not recommend it. 
it is settling my curiosity for obsessively researching Egypt at this point. I don't know why my brain is obsessed on Egypt, watching Egypt documentaries on YouTube. That's about all my feed is, is Egyptian documentaries, conspiracy theories, animated horror stories, and booktube. But we are at a little over seven and a half hours now. I did get my library card issue resolved this morning before it started to snow. My card was just expired. It expires every two years, and I know that. I just, I guess, I didn't realize it had been two years. Now that I think about it, it's actually been three years. But from what I was talking about with the librarian is that, um, because my card would have expired in 2020. And I came, I was in Cleveland in January, February, and half of March in 2020 because I was still in college. I came home from spring break, and I didn't go to the library at all then. But that's when COVID happened. Everything shut down. When stuff started opening back up again around here is when I fell down the flight of stairs. It's on the, on the outside of my door. Very narrow steps. I fell down the entire flight of stairs and broke my ankle in three spots. And was non-weight bearing from the 4th of July until the Friday before Labor Day. So I did not go anywhere. <laughs> so I wasn't going to the library then. And then end of August is when I went back to Cleveland because I had labs that were in person. My lectures were all online yet, but my labs were in person, so I had to be back in Cleveland. And I graduated in December. Apparently during the pandemic, they were just renewing everybody's cards without them coming in. Although, it doesn't take much to renew the card. I literally just had to walk in and I'm like, I think my card's expired. And they didn't ask for proof of my address. I know when you get a card, they you have to prove your address with either a bill or your driver's license didn't ask me for it and they just asked me to verify my phone number why I can't do this online <laughs> I don't know because none of it's changed but it's renewed and um, I have a book on Libby I got the imposters by Bradley Godfrey that's a thriller one the one I wanted to read next though is uh, it's like a weird glare on there the cheat sheet by Sarah Adams the description sounds real good. This is romantic comedy, and I know it is. Um, I kept thinking this author's name sounded really familiar, and I remember why now. I read two books by this author in 2021. Hated them. It was a, like, two books in a series. Hated them. But I read the second book because I was like, I need to know if there's any character development at least. Because why I hated them was because I hated the characters. There is not. We'll see how I like this one. Book two for this 24 hour timer challenge. And Eleanor is sitting here with me because it is nighttime. And you're very picky about when we go to bed. I finished The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I'm going to give it four stars. I know I said earlier I did not like the two other books I read by her. I think one of them was called like The Temporary Roomie or Temporary Roommate. There's like two books in that. It's like a duology in that series. Hated both of them. But we're now a little over 12 hours. I think I can fit two more books into this part of the challenge. So what next? I'm going to start it tomorrow morning on my way to work. I'm going to start The Imposter by Brad A. Godfrey. And then I listen to that about two times speed and that one's about 10 hours. So I think I can finish that one relatively quickly. And then the other one I'm going to read is Secured Cabin Sleep 6 by Lisa Unger. That one is about 12 and a half hours. So I, th I think I can finish it this next week, especially if I listen a little bit after work, which I probably will do because I've gotten back into Animal Crossing this week, which I tend to come and go on that. So we'll charge my Switch up and then we'll play on there probably this week while listening. But that's where we are now. Probably not going to listen to any more audiobooks tonight. Just start again tomorrow when I leave for work. It's 9 o'clock. I didn't listen to any more of the, um, my new book tonight. I was planning on it, but then my sister needed help with her English homework on Edgar Allan Poe. And I am a huge fan of Poe's work. So I could answer the question. She's like, I don't know how you remembered the answers to this without rereading the story but like I just 
The Task of Amontillado is one of my favorite works by him, so I did have that off the top of my head. But tonight we started Imposter by Brade Godfrey. Didn't realize it was a new release. I just saw that the on Libby that my library had unlimited copies, and I was like, yeah, that one sounds interesting, intriguing, and it was a thriller, and I'm super into thrillers. I did start my way to work today, and I also listened on my way home. We are at a little over 13 and a half hours now. I'm thinking for sure this book and maybe all of a note, at least part of a fourth book. If not all of it, I'll probably end up adjusting my listening speed to make it fit within the 24 hours or as close as I can. I typically listen at two times speed unless I'm immersion reading just because two times speed is still a little too slow for how I fast I read with my eyes. But Imposter is really good so far. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. And I know, like, it says on the cover even, like, Two Sisters, A Lifetime of Secrets. But I wasn't expecting, like, life and death type. I mean, I guess I should have really expected, like, life and death type secrets. But I'm not, ex wasn't expecting, like, a mysterious man to appear and to, like, run them off the road in snowy Chicago and result in an accident. I also wasn't expecting how their parents died in it. Because both, both of their parents die at the same time. And how they die, I was not expecting. I was expecting something more tragic than what it was. I wasn't expecting it to like be like an accident, accident type thing. But it is, this one is interesting because the one sister, is Rosie, is in a coma. And Lily is trying to figure out what Rosie's life and death secret she wanted to hide. But I think Lily is also hiding something. I mean, she obviously has mental health problems and part of me wonders if she had like she just had a baby so I'm wondering if part of it is she has like postpartum depression but I also think there's something else underlying because she's really paranoid and more paranoid than she should be I think as a new mom like I'm pretty sure a lot of new moms aren't worried about hip dysplasia randomly and like do you hear a clicking I haven't heard like anyone in my family ever be concerned about that or any of my co-workers and like she's a doctor so and her husband's an orthopedic doctor maybe that's why um we do get some background as to why she's like paranoid about medical conditions why she's fixated on hip dysplasia i don't know there's like a million other things i feel like you could be obsessed focus on what's wrong with your child and then hip dysplasia especially when there's no signs of it also kind of unclear on how old her baby is so she hasn't come back from a maternity leave but she also took an extended maternity leave but like i'm still kind of unclear how old the baby is and some of the things make it seem like this baby's like several several months old and other times it almost feels like the baby's only like maybe two three months old i don't know it's a little confusing with how old the baby is, but I am curious to see where we're going. Part two is from Rosie's point of view, and Rosie is in a coma in part one after the car accident. So I'm hoping we get a reveal more of Rosie's secrets, and maybe we'll get to hear like some secrets that Lily is keeping from Rosie soon. I don't know. It's actually really interesting so far. I wasn't expecting it to like it this much. I, I saw it sitting on the main screen like unlimited copies and I was like yeah that sounds sounds all right for a book I just need a book <laughs> we'll see where this goes tonight's update is that I am now almost 15 and a half hours in and we are at let's pull it up here of course it has to load 65 percent in imposter I have several theories going at this point. I'm not going to share my theories because I don't want to spoil anything if I end up being right. But we've gotten into a abnormal mental health psychology aspect of this book. And I have my bachelor's degree of science and health sciences. And I minored in biology and psychology and my psychology minor focused in abnormal psychology in mental health in the brain like I just like grouped all of those together and I only focused on those classes 
and this is right up my alley and I was driving while listening to this book but I was very tempted the moment when I came home to pull out all of my abnormal psych books and start researching what's wrong with Rosie because the traumatic brain injury has changed things which is which is common but um it's going good so far I really like it uh we don't I thought yesterday when I was gonna start part two we were gonna go into like Rosie's point of view and we kind of do in the sense that it goes back in time I thought it was gonna go back in time like before the accident and, like to her point of view up to the accident but no we don't do that we go back in time and we like get to listen to like some of her journal entries to her therapist but then we go back to Lily's point of view for like present day after the accident so we're like jumping back and forth within the book it's interesting it wasn't what I was expecting but I like it yet by the way it's going I think I'm going to finish this tomorrow because Libby estimates I only have an hour and 50 minutes left and between my commute uh, let's see probably about I'll probably only have like 30 minutes left of the book after my commute and stuff and when I sit in the parking lot before work so that will probably be the plan to finish this one tomorrow and then we'll move on to secluded cabin sleep six tonight my voice is a little scratchy uh I had a number of patients that were smokers today and I have very sensitive nasal passages, I guess if you want to call them. It causes me to have a very sore throat for days afterwards. Drinking like a bottle of water an hour at this point to try to help clear it. But... I finished Imposter today. I'm gonna give it four stars. I did not realize it was this author's debut book, but it was very good. I usually be I'm usually a little bit more lenient when it's a debut author. I really did like it. I did predict half of the twist. I got like half of it right. I'm not gonna share what it is because I don't want to spoil it. But I got half of it right, and then I I was not expecting the other half of it. That was not in my realm of theories. But we are a little over 17 hours now. Tomorrow I'm going to start Secluded Cabin Sleep 6. We're at 17 hours, so that's three, 7 more hours for this challenge. And I believe, pull it up here. Yes, okay. If I open the book, open it. I think it's 12 hours and 20 minutes and I do listen to it a little bit faster than one time speed I don't know how anyone listens on one time speed it sounds very slow and over pronunciated to me so we'll listen to it a little bit faster than that and I think it'll take about seven hours to listen to this I think roughly I don't know, we'll adjust time as I need to because I'm probably going to try to make this one last the full 24 hours to the, to the 24 hour mark. First of all, if anything happens during this clip, it's because Shelby is sitting behind the camera perched up looking like she's going to pounce on something. You have had no catnip tonight. What are you doing? Anyways, I did not come on yesterday, but record anything yesterday but I started secluded cabin sleeps six it's pretty good so far um we're, we're starting to get into like mystery thriller part of it most of it so far has just been like built up and we're at like 40 percent but I am at 19 and a half hours and there's seven and a half hours left in the audiobook so I think what are you doing Shelby what are you doing? Oh, okay. Goodbye. She jumped onto the bed over there. But there's seven and a half hours left in this audiobook. Uh, sorry. Would you like to come to the conclusion? Um, no, I would not. Sorry, that is my biological dad. Do I want to go to his Mexican Thanksgiving? No, I do not. I do not like Mexican food. 
Um, anyway, so we are on secluded cabin sleeps six, seven and a half hours left at 19 and a half hours for my timer. I think I can make it that fifth this weekend and then finish up this part because I got my calendar behind me, but I think next week will be a good time. I'm debating if I want to do ebooks next or physical books because I think Thanksgiving weekend will be a good time for me to try to knock out a good chunk of part two of this challenge for me because I don't have to work Thursday or Friday. And then obviously I don't work Saturday or Sunday yet. It's a four day weekend, so I think I'll have plenty of time. In other news, I put up my Christmas tree that Eleanor is sniffing. It's just a tree, honey. Um, it's a little crooked because Shelby's knocked it over approximately four times in the um, hour and a half that it's been up, which is why I do not do anything besides have the pretty lights on it because if there were ornaments on it they would be everywhere but this is just a little tree I have like in my bedroom here and then we'll have another tree in the kitchen and we'll have one in our living room and then there are some more in the bedrooms but we have not gotten our real tree yet because um we get a real tree for like our living room We'll probably get that shortly after Thanksgiving, to be completely honest. But otherwise, um, I'm debating about continuing Evelyn Hardcastle tonight or Secluded Cabin Sleep 6. I haven't quite decided what I'm in the mood for yet. But one's mystery, one's thriller. So roughly the same genre. But for sure, I am going to finish this challenge this weekend with Secluded Cabin Sleep 6. All right. So, I did finish Secluded Cabin Sleep 6. Hi, honey. Go to sleep. Eleanor likes to sit there because she's been cold all day because it's super windy. And I make her go all the way outside. Got a little stuff on her face. And she also wants the whipped cream on my drink. But we officially hit... 24 hours I purposely timed it to finish the book as 24 hours was hitting so I didn't have to start another one um it was good like the thrilling part was but I was bored for the last hour because um we hit the climax and then it's like it was resolved very quickly and then there was still like an hour left of the book which had some more like resolution but it was boring so I'm only going to give it three stars, but we did it. We, we read four books in 24 hours on my timer. It did take me like two weeks to do, but let's do some quick calculations here. I think I have a sticky note on my computer here. Do, do, do. Okay. Calculator. Uh, 360. Eleanor, stop pushing my hand. 304. First book, I believe, was 350. And what was the other book I read? I got in my iPad here. Let's see. Where is my app? Three fifty two. Forgot we gotta add two. I only did three fifty there. Mm, imposter. How many pages? Oh, that was three fifty. So I read over this twenty four hour challenge one thousand three hundred and seventy four pages equivalent in audiobooks. So I think I've been debating going back and forth on ebooks or physical books next. Um, I think I want to do physical books just because I have a ton of physical books on my TBR this month and um, I haven't finished a single physical book this month besides Broken Throne, which I started two months ago. So, I'm um, got two physical books over here. I'm going to try to finish probably one more tonight because it's about 11 p.m. I'm going to try to finish one. If I don't, it will be very, very, very early. Technically tomorrow. But I'll probably include it in this week's vlog yet, though. 
and then I'm gonna try to finish the other one tomorrow and then we'll start the, like, the challenge after I finish center because that's the one I have more pages to read in so tonight we'll do Evelyn Hardcastle tomorrow I'll read cinder and then we'll start fresh with a new 24-hour challenge probably mid Sunday or Monday and I say that because I think I'll be able to do it fairly quickly if I do physical next to get through my TBR because American Thanksgiving is this week so I have Thursday and Friday off so I'm pretty sure that will be my plan